It's a beautiful afternoon here in Melbourne. I'm back out on the bike. I'm probably about two or three kilometers into the ride. I met a fence. I'm standing outside our office here, part of our building here in South Melbourne. I just thought I'd uh, shoot a quick little video in around something that someone asked me about yesterday. And that was uh, luck. Look, I'm sure everyone's got their own opinions and their own thoughts on this, but at least from my perspective, luck's just a word. What I think is probably more appropriate is not the word luck, but it's more about persistence and perseverance. I'm about to head overseas tomorrow. Uh, another business trip, lots of events and lots of meetings with potential clients, potential investors. Really, it's about going out there and pursuing what you want to chase and chase and chase and execute and deliver and then go again. If that's what you do, then, you know, maybe your life will turn out lucky. Create your own luck. Michael Perrimal is currently away. He's jet setting across the globe. He's generally away these days. Like it's a common occurrence with Mike, but he's currently in Bali. In Bali, hey? He tells us he is working hard. Or hardly working. <laughs> it depends on the date. I know, right? Yeah, he's going to hate that I, I said know. that. <laughs> there seems to be a common theme that the harder you work, the luckier you, you get. It's a lot of the work that you do and being consistent in everything that you're doing. You don't actually know when that will happen uh, because you, you'll just encounter challenges after challenges after challenges and all of a sudden, in a spate of one month, everything just goes your way. And you're thinking, well, that's so lucky. But it's actually not. All the work, all the effort, all the grind that you put in over those months of work is what has created these events now. I've sat with billionaires, I've sat with people with little money. They all make money. Okay, they all make money. But the one thing that they don't have in common is the person who doesn't have enough money, they don't know what to do with it. The person who has the money knows what to do with it. Some of the people that we met over in HK are billionaires. That's right. What was most interesting was to note the type of people that they were. Mm -hmm. These people were so humble and genuine and approachable. That was extraordinary. They don't run on luck. They didn't walk into the next day or walk into the next meeting thinking, oh, well, this is going to be a lucky meeting or, you know, it's going to go my way. The one attribute that really stood out for me was how certain they were and how comfortable that they were in who they are, what they're doing, what they wanted to achieve. They had the big purpose. They knew where they were going. Everything was just mapped out. It's, I'm going to create tomorrow and this is how it's going to look. It's staying the path. It's, it's choosing what you want to do in life, setting some goals, setting some objectives, setting some plans. Uh, for yourself, for your business, your loved ones, whatever it may be, but then sticking at it, work hard, stay focused, and then execute. And more importantly, if things don't go your way, then get back up and go again. Now, I'm sure plenty of you um, who are watching this have been in a predicament where you've set out on, on, on a journey and you've come against an obstacle, a barrier, perhaps a fence, like me, you're intending to go one way, the thing's not willing to move, and of course you uh, you run straight into the thing. I think the fence came off better than I did. I definitely hit the ground with a bit of a thud, shoulders feeling a bit sore, the chest was sore. I felt like my t one of my testicles <laughs> was up in my abdomen, it, it, was, <laughs> it was painful. Anyway, so here's the thing, right? Like, that's only two or three kilometers in. You know, it's probably a, I don't know, 25, 30 kilometer round trip max. I had a choice to make. Um, I could either straighten the bars up, uh, get back on the bike and continue on, or I could turn around, go back home um, and sulk. <laughs> I, I picked myself up and straightened the handlebars up, dusted myself off and I said to myself, you know what? I said I was gonna go to Jails Park, I'm going. And so I did. Um, and I rode, and I rode, and um, arrived here. There's a part of me that is um, far more fulfilled because I stuck to my commitment and there's integrity in that. Uh, I think a lot of the times what happens is we sell ourselves short on what, what we're capable of um, or what we can endure, so we, we take the, the easy road. It's a small thing, you know, riding the bike, falling off, getting back on, but the thing about it is the unconscious mind is always listening. It's always looking for reasons to reinforce a belief or 
to reinforce perhaps the uh, the unconscious belief, yeah? So in order to forge a new method of thinking, a new mindset, you gotta be willing to do the difficult things. You've got to be willing to do it even though it hurts. And I mean, I'm hurting right now. I'm not going to not gonna lie. It's not an excuse. Um, you got to go another round. you got to do whatever it takes until you accomplish what you set for yourself. You build those reference points of self-trust, of self-belief, so that then the next time round, you know you got this.